We now welcome on Brandon Wu. Uh, he's a professional golfer and recent Stanford grad. He was the 2020 Corn Ferry Tour champion uh, and is now competing on the Corn Ferry Tour. Uh, Brandon, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Excited to be on here. Yeah. Uh, so of those that I just listed, do you have one of those that you uh, are most proud of, those accomplishments? Because to me, graduating from Stanford, and I know you were an engineering major, I feel like that would be the one I'm most proud of. But 2020 Corn Ferry Tour champion is also pretty impressive. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I, I think both are cool. But I mean, I think going to Stanford was definitely a pretty special experience. Um, you know, hopefully, when I look back on my golf career, um, hopefully, you know, there can be lots of cool achievements, but you only get to go to Stanford once. So I probably have to go with that one. I just think being in that environment, um, just going to class with a bunch of really smart, talented um, kids that come from all over is cool. Um, getting to play golf for Stanford was awesome. And uh, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty cool experience that I glad I got to go through. Speaking of, um, of, getting to go to Stanford, uh, as you, as I'm sure, you know, another famous, uh, Stanford golf alum is Tiger Woods. Uh, were there any like, like urban legends or crazy stories of Tiger, you know, like sh blackout drunk shooting a 62 or like driving it, like clear over the highway? Like, was there, any, are there any of those like urban legends that, that people still tell us day about Tiger? I think there are a few floating around. Um, but yeah, he, he spent two years there. Um, I think there's one, um, I guess, pretty interesting story just because, I mean, I, I don't think ever anyone at Stanford really comprehended how big he was in the golf world. So I remember hearing this one story, Stanford would host their home tournament um, at the Stanford golf course every, uh, every spring. And uh, I guess, you know, the his freshman year before the tournaments played, he like goes to the athletics department, he's talking about, like, hey, like, there's gonna be a lot of people out here watching me, you know, like, I hope you guys are ready. And they're like, oh, like, we've seen it all, like, you're, who are you? Like, you know, whatever. Um, but sure enough, like, thousands and thousands of people came, you know, to the Stanford golf course on, like, a Thursday afternoon to come watch Tiger play. And of course, they were, like, overwhelmed. They didn't have, like, enough people in place. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Like, that's, you know, his Stanford years were right when he was, like, really, really coming to prominence and, and really starting to excel. Yeah. That's awesome. That reminds me of like Michael Jordan when he played baseball. I remember just seeing the Last Dance documentary that they yeah. put him in double A instead of single A, <laughs> not because he was actually good enough, but just because they didn't have like the capacity for the media yeah. that it would take because <laughs> it's Michael Jordan. Yeah, um, yeah. What was your experience like playing there? Uh, I mean, maybe not thousands of people showing up to a, a random event, but playing on the team, was it like very notable at Stanford? Was there a lot of like... Uh, team spirit and things like that yeah I guess well the thing is the I feel like Stanford has so many good sports programs that sometimes you kind of just get lost in the shuffle I mean it's it's hard to you know make too much noise when you have Katie Ledecky on the swim team and you know coming off x amount of gold medals from the Olympics and you know she's swimming for Stanford <laughs> and you know things like that but um yeah so my senior year we actually won the national championship which was you know, very memorable experience um, and something that was cool. And uh, yeah, I feel like it's it's cool that, I mean, obviously a lot of the students are, are on the sports teams. I think we had over 30 sports teams. So, you know, a lot of athletes on campus, um, but I felt like it was cool to kind of have, um, you know, like people in my classes, like I remember, uh, I think there was, you know, like a Stanford daily article on our national championship and people like congratulating me uh, in class the next day and stuff like that. So it, it was cool to be part of that. Why not Cal? I'm just going to say, <laughs> Dylan and I are both Berkeley grads. I'm sure you could have gone. We would have dapped you up the next day after. Oh, yeah. Like, we would have been, yeah. been your official hype man. <laughs> yeah, I would yeah, have yeah. like a part-time job just to follow you around. And yeah. Yeah. You up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, Cal's obviously had some good professional golf success recently. Um, They're so, basically yeah. a powerhouse with Homa and Morikawa. They're basically yeah, yeah. a powerhouse. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, Cal wouldn't have been too bad. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Um, so what? Like, I always wondered this with with Cal students because, like, when I was when I was doing my school work, I felt like I was drowning and I was just like a normal guy. And you were studying engineering at Stanford and also playing on the golf team. What was it like to like balance all that? And like, 
you know, what, and how is it compared to now when you actually are, you know, have a little bit more leisure time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I think, I think the toughest part of it all was just for golf, like how much class you miss just because we play a tournament that's three days and then you have a practice round and usually you have a travel day too. So it's five days for a tournament. And that's, I mean, it's obviously like scheduled around the weekend, but you're still missing three days of class for each tournament. So that part was definitely hard. Um, I think for me personally, I, I was always like, I, I felt like I was like smart enough to like get the work done and do it like decently enough, but I was never like smart enough to get you know straight A's or anything like that. I, I felt like I was like a career B plus student, you know? Um, so, so it was like, it was, That's yeah. Fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, I was never like a standout student, but it, it was like good enough. Like I'd get it done, get it done efficiently um and then that's yeah that's kind of what I did through my Stanford career and uh yeah I, I loved my classes I really enjoyed my major um so that was all good um and then yeah now I guess it's interesting because you definitely play more golf for, as a professional in terms of like you play every week but um you definitely have more downtime day to day um so sometimes it's like it can get a little boring almost um but like I might be biased now since I have nothing to do, but cause I definitely remember at Stanford, I'd be like, why do I have to study for this midterm? While I'm trying to play a tournament and like on the road, like, um, so yeah, it was, it was, it's good and bad, I guess. It's, it's nice to just chill and relax. And, um, but yeah, I, I kind of do miss doing, you know, solve, you know, working with people and classmates and doing projects and stuff to some extent. Yeah. Well, similar to how like Bryson uses his physics major to, you know, dominate the golf course have you thought about like using your engineering major and like creating a ball bridge that like goes over the trees and you can like have you ever thought about that maybe like you yeah (laughs) I think um well I guess one thing that comes from the engineering I guess a little bit and applies to my golf is we do a lot of like statistics and a lot of like we try to be like really detailed in like the science stuff like maybe not to the extent that Bryson does but um you know we try to figure it out um, as like precisely as we can mm-hmm. um, just because yeah I feel like with all the tools that are available today there's so much data that you can collect and analyze and um, why not like it's for me it's kind of fun too to like see how you're doing and see where you can kind of gain a small edge and uh, yeah it's, it's it's interesting yeah it, it's incredible that's the same sport that you're playing professionally as me just grabbing three random irons and running across the fairway with a beer being like one of these clubs will be fine I'll figure it out when I get there <laughs> Um, but one thing that I just had to make sure that we got to in this interview is that you played the U S open in 2019 and on the final round on Sunday, you missed your Stanford graduation. So you received your diploma at the U S open after finishing ahead. I just had to pull this up. Uh, you beat Ricky Fowler, Phil Mickelson, Abraham answer, Carlos Ortiz, all these incredible golfers. My number one question I want to ask is how do you celebrate after a day like that? Like with so many accomplishments packed into one day, like what, what do you do next? What do you do that night? And like that week? Yeah, I guess, well, funny enough, after graduation, you move out the next day. So I actually drove (laughs) straight back to Stanford and uh, (laughs) moved out. (laughs) So yeah, I guess less exciting than probably you were hoping for. Um, But uh yeah, it was, it was definitely a whirlwind that whole week, um, you know, doing the graduation ceremony right after I got off um, the 18th green. And it was, it was really cool. And, uh, you know, luckily, a lot of my friends were, you know, still at Stanford. So they came down to watch um, throughout the week. And my parents were already going to come to town for graduation. So they were all there. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was, that's kind of a, you know, I remember waking up that morning and I was definitely a little bummed missing out on like all the ceremonies with my friends and whatnot. But uh, I think now looking back, like it's, it's a pretty unique experience and a, and a cool story to tell. I, that's actually, it's, it's funny because um, JMO brought that up and I, I remember seeing that video and being like, wow, that's unbelievable. Cause seeing the video of you getting your diploma, heading off the 18th green. Um, so that's cool that now I'm talking to the guy. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I, <laughs> So whenever like something like that's going on, I feel like you had a million things going through your head and you get your diploma. Like, did you struggle at all with like what to do with it? Like you got a million things to do. You got to sign your scorecard, you know, go back in, do the press interviews. Like, did you like 
throw it in your golf bag and forget about it next day or like what happened there <laughs> i honestly don't even remember but it was definitely like um it was a surprise like no one had said anything about it or anything and they like surprised me with that so i was like I, I don't even know i was just like going with the flow like someone was like handing me this handed me like the cap or something like all right look here for a photo like whatever and, you know i just i just remember being i guess a little overwhelmed but uh it was it was pretty sweet yeah yeah, it's like the classic, you moving the next day <clears throat> seems like the classic, you know, that meme where there's like all the people at the party and there's one guy in the corner with like a mask on and he's like, they don't know that I'm mildly popular on Twitter or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. I imagine yeah. that was you like renting a U-Haul the next day to move out yeah. of your dorm or whatever. You're like, they don't know exactly, I just beat yeah. Phil Mickelson at the US Open. <laughs> and they, these guys have no yeah, idea. Yeah. Um, for you though, uh, I mean, obviously you were at Stanford, so good backup option with your uh, Stanford engineering degree. Uh, but was there a specific point where you were like, okay, golf is going to be my career. Like this is a viable option. And I'm going to like dedicate myself fully to it. Um, and like what went into that decision? Yeah, I guess um, I felt like, you know, like growing up as a kid and you know, in high school getting recruited and going to Stanford, I'd always kind of thought about it, but I definitely wasn't fully decided on it um, until probably like halfway through my senior year. I just oh, wanted wow. to make sure that, yeah, which is probably like later, you know, I figured I would do it, but I, I wasn't 100% sure yet. Um, I guess I just wanted to make sure that I was doing it for the right reasons. And that was for me, like, because I really enjoyed it because I thought I could do well. And um, because I wanted to and not just because I played at Stanford and that seemed like the next option or like because I've been playing golf my entire life that I should play professionally um, so yeah but like I'm happy with the decision I, I've been having a lot of fun this past I guess almost two years now um, but it, it's been a cool journey and uh, yeah I'm excited to see what's next what's it been like on the on the corn ferry like in terms of and you played in a couple PGA tour events obviously you played in the U.S. Open how does it compare to, to playing in those bigger events, you know, the day-to-day -day of being on the Corn Ferry? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think the Corn Ferry is really interesting because you got like a, like a bunch of different types of people out there. You know, there's some that are, you know, kind of guys like me. There's a few that are sort of just out of college and just getting started professionally. Um, you know, there's a couple of slightly older guys who may have had their PGA Tour card and lost their card for a year. And now they're playing with us for the year. Um, and then, you know, kind of similarly, like there's older, like journeyman people, like, you know, trying to get their like first PGA tour card as well. And, uh, it's, it's interesting because I think the competition is really fierce on the tour just because, you know, you're so close to getting a tour card and that means, you know, financial security and like, like making it a lot of people, you know, when they talk about dreaming of playing professional golf, they dream about playing on the PGA tour and, you know, you're, you're kind of just a step away. So I think it's, it's really interesting being out there. It's very competitive week to week and uh, it's, it's a cool experience for sure. Yeah. Well, and yeah, I mean, I, I imagine it's super cutthroat cause it's like the guys there, like from everything I've, I've always heard, it's like in terms of talent, there's nothing really separating them from mm -hmm. being on the PGA tour. It's just putting it together week to week mm -hmm. consistently. And mm -hmm. so like, I'm like, I could imagine it can just be, brutal sometimes for some of those guys that have been grinding for their entire yeah. life trying to get on um so that's crazy yeah yeah for sure yeah for you and where you're at um obviously playing on some pga tour events but being on the corn ferry tour uh what if you could like come top 10 in a pga tour event or be like winning consistently on the corn ferry tour is there one of those that you prefer like how do you set your like what's your mindset going into the different tournaments and like do you, how do you prioritize the tournaments and, and everything yeah I I feel like I try to treat them equally um as best I can and I think there's a certain um it takes probably a little bit of time to get comfortable with that you know um like when you're playing a tour event with some of these you know like Phil Mickelson and whatnot it's it's just sometimes it's hard to block that out and and uh you know it's hard to not think about it but um I guess, yeah, I, I feel like I've become more comfortable and that's part of being a professional and learning, um, you know, this past couple of years on how to play professionally. And yeah, you just got to be comfortable and trust yourself, be confident and, you know, try and do the best that you can.
Yeah. Um, and that also makes me think, I'm just going to call Dylan out here. Uh, Dylan has been on the record jokingly saying that if he really put his mind to it and decided when he was younger that he would be able to make it on the tour. Is that the dumbest thing you've ever heard in your entire <laughs> life? I've, I've seen Dylan play. He's a good golfer for sure. Average, maybe. Um, but can you can we just get it on the record that that's an incredibly stupid thing to say? Yeah, I, I mean, anything can happen. I, oh, I no. Think, oh. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's really interesting. Um, but golf is it's interesting because, like, some people have, like, certain skill levels. But there's also this skill of, like, playing well when it counts, you know. And I think that's, like, why we think of, like, Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson as being so great winning all these majors because it's, it's just interesting. I mean, you can be – one of the best players in the world but you go to q school and you have one week to play well and if you don't play well you're nothing to do for the year you don't get your card and it's it's interesting i mean on a weekly basis if you don't play well thursday and friday it doesn't you won't make the cut and you can't even play saturday sunday but it's so it's all about like timing and uh you know you string together a good week dylan you might get a chance <laughs> hey well given how uh uh, how much my performance usually goes down when we're like playing through. Like if I have to do a tee shot in front of another group, I always yeah. just shank it. So I don't think I don't think I got that cut out for me to be honest. I uh, I don't think I have the mindset. Physical yeah. tools are all there though. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's the most amount of pressure in the entire world. I mean, when I try to think about <laughs> professional golfers, like if there's just a group behind us watching, like it is 99 times out of 100, I'm shanking that drive, <laughs> let alone like being at the US Open, tearing off in front of a crowd and all these um, legends. But um, I guess sort of on the subject, I just wanted to know in terms of you as an individual, are you just asked constantly by friends and family or random people that you run into for golf tips as soon as they find out that you are a professional golfer? And how annoying is that? I guess uh, I don't mind too much, um, but it's it's interesting. I feel like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if my tips are any good because I just feel like it's it's hard to explain sometimes. And honestly, like I feel like I don't know like that much about like teaching like someone you know I think it takes like a certain skill set to be able to explain it clearly and to be able to kind of like speak their language and like really teach someone um but yeah I I, I enjoy it you know everyone's friendly about it so uh, it's it's good ah okay well, that was a relatively nicer answer than I was expecting I was gonna say I've been hooking my long irons pretty consistently now, pulling them left <laughs> for me. I just wanted to give you a quick tip there, but uh, that's all right. We, we can talk off air about my yeah, yeah. long iron shots. <laughs> um, just another thing that we wanted to ask here. Uh, Brooks or Bryson? Who? What's your pick? Mm, I... I'd go with Brooks probably. <laughs> yeah, there we go. We're, we're all aboard the Brooks train. So, <laughs> yeah, I think, I guess I probably wouldn't do it exactly how he does it, but I kind of see like his way of thinking and his way of like, just kind of like speaking exactly what he sees, you know, and it's, it's not like, I feel like a lot of people in that kind of position can kind of just like say what people want to hear or whatnot. And he kind of gives like a fresh perspective. Um, which I feel like is more genuine um, and I do appreciate I feel like yeah I might do it slightly differently but I, I kind of admire his way of doing it yeah. that's a that's a very uh, professional answer that's that was very very well done <laughs> yeah. you're prepared for the press yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you thought of maybe starting a rivalry with another golfer you know, boost your profile a little bit into an intense competition. You'll have random people on Twitter begging tournaments to pair you guys together. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess, I, yeah, it's interesting since that the tours announced their, like, $40 million uh, performance incentive pool, I think it's called. Uh, it's, it's interesting. I mean, you obviously, you see, like, the Brooks and Bryson feud. You see Max Homa on Twitter roasting people. Um, and then I don't know, maybe it's lesser known. There's this guy, Jim Herman, who's, like, a uh, slightly older dude kind of a journeyman um, but he's been 
firing off tweets as well that are pretty funny <laughs> talking about the 40 million dollars you have to cash out so i think it's it's pretty cool <laughs> well hey if you want to say something like absolutely inflammatory like totally out of left field on this podcast to get it going a little bit bump up your status a little bit yeah, yeah. Uh, get that 40 million we're all ears yeah, yeah. if you even wanted to throw out a random name of another golfer to start a rivalry with, with we will yeah. attack them for you <laughs> yeah yeah we'll be your hound dogs yeah <laughs> they'll be my hit man <laughs> yeah, i will exactly. be in their mentions every 20 minutes yeah uh, yeah and lap. and we'll get a bunch of people at the events to chant your name when yeah. the other guy's playing <laughs> perfect yeah. yeah sounds like a plan <laughs> yeah uh another quick question here saw on your little profile on the profile on the corn Ferry tour that your scoring average is currently 69 is there any part of you that wouldn't want to improve your score so you can stick right on the dot of 69 yeah i think luckily 69 is i think one of the better scoring average so you know keeping it right there must be right good there. for yeah. multiple reasons <laughs> yeah. i think that's a that's a great closing question <laughs> yeah right now i want to uh, yeah bother you with any more with any more <laughs> sex jokes yeah yeah uh, uh, thank you so much for for taking the time uh we really really appreciate it this is a lot of fun oh yeah you guys are great thanks so much for talking with me